Hi, Jodie. Hi, Marie. Nice for you to finally get here. Yeah, sorry I was late. That is a bit of a trait of mine. And now it's leaked into the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Lovely. Since you're at school, Marie, mm. have things changed from a sort of LGBTQ plus point of view? Oh, the massively. Was it I went to school in the 1980s. Well, late 70s, mm. 1980s. Mm. And it was never mentioned. There was no... It, it didn't exist as far as we were concerned see, in school. It definitely exists when I was at school. Mm. Um, but So I was school late 90s into the noughties, mm-hmm. left school in 2010. And yeah, it was. It, but it was quite negative. You know, it was gay yeah. was used as an insult. Yeah, and well, the, my teaching experience was completely different. We had a big mm. um, campaign in school to get rid of that use of the word gay as a derogatory mm. term. Um, And there were posters up everywhere about that. And, you know, I I feel like I was just very open about it with the children. We just discussed it. Yeah. Because it's normal. It's your own time you're wasting. Ramblings from Beyond the Classroom with Marie and Jodie. Well, today we're joined by Victoria Cleary Simons. Victoria is a writer. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Victoria is a writer and editor for Beyond PSHE and is a secondary educator. She's done a lot of work over the years around inclusion, especially LGBTQ plus positive education, decolonising the curriculum and challenging everyday sexism and ableism. She has feelings, so let's wind her up and let her go. Woo! <laughs> So, um, before we get started, let's just say that some of the words we're using today, like the words queer, are words that Vic is comfortable with and we're all comfortable with. We've just been chatting about how schools have changed since we were students, so what was your experience growing up as a queer teenager? Well, uh, thank you very much Mm. for letting me come on. I'm very excited to be asked. (laughs) Uh, So, um, just to reveal my age, I began my education... Mm. Um, if you include sort of, I guess, preschool education, I suppose. So that was the late 80s. Mm -hmm. And um, I finished my A-levels in 2003, um, which coincidentally was the exact same period that Section 28 actually ran for. Oh, interesting. So, so yes. So I am literally a child of Section 28. Mm. Um, so for those of you who are it's sort of old enough to be qualified educators, uh, in fact, but were not actually born when mm, it existed, yeah. which is marvellous. Um, Section 28 was a piece of legislation um, and it uh, came in in May 1988. And the amendment stated a local authority shall not intentionally promote homosexuality or publish material with the intention of promoting homosexuality or promote the teaching in any maintained school of the acceptability of homosexuality as a pretended family relationship. That now, word obviously, pretended is shocking, particularly oh, shocking. Yeah. Odd. I've never, um, I've never heard the words quite like that. And mm, that is. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So it's a, it was a strange old time. Hmm. I was not aware of the name Section 28. I did not hear it yeah. growing up. Um, so I'm slightly mangling the words of Seamus Heaney here. Uh, and But I trust that he would not mind. <laughs> and I feel like my experience of it was as both actually a teenager and as a teacher later, Mm. because bear in mind, the people who trained me were trained under Section 28. So there's a a long legacy and impact. And it's a huge nothing that we fear. It is this huge, strange nothing. Mm. So nobody Mm. was ever sort of convicted, I suppose. I'm sorry, I don't have enough legal training, but no Mm -hmm. legal action was brought against a school or individual as a result of Section 28. It never Mm. happened. The implication, even Mm. though, if you actually look at the letter of the law, you could acknowledge the existence of LGBTQ plus people, 
But in practice, the reality was that educators, school staff just ran scared. Mm. Um, So just to give you a little bit of context, you might be able to hear from my rather strange voice that sort of wanders Mm -hmm. all around the country. Uh, So I was born in Scotland and I went to a state primary school and state secondary school. Mm. Uh, and there was just never any reference yeah. to an- anything, even in the neighborhood of LGBTQ plus ideas. Um, I, d- I don't think it really existed. However, funnily enough, I remember, I'm going to name her and I really hope she's still around. I remember my English teacher, Mrs. Nickel, who mm. is very, very small uh, <laughs> and very ferocious. Mm. And I think in hindsight, probably did inspire me to train as an English teacher. Uh, Mm. She did actually have this very well-preserved, very 1980s looking poster in her classroom. She loved, she was a real film buff. She had Mm. loads of film posters all around the room. Fabulous human being. And she had this poster that said challenge gender roles. Mm. And that was, so I was sat in that classroom in 1998. Mm. Mm. Um, And actually, that was important and when i i moved to england as a teenager mm. and i went to yeah. a very very different type of school <laughs> a very different type of setting <laughs> so uh i went from a you know, quite ordinary mm. comprehensive school to a fee-paying grammar school oh, okay in, in an un, un, very different and in an unnamed location in the midlands uh, it was also a Church of England school. Mm-hmm. I am not Church of England. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I don't practice any particular religion. Um, it was a, a school with a quite diverse population in some respects. Mm-hmm. Um, but both the sort of religious tone to the school and Section 28 mm-hmm. definitely meant that I overheard a number of my peers saying yeah. they can't say that, they can't mention that. They can't talk about gay people. And they said that as a good thing. Oh, oh god! So this, these were teenagers saying, did they say, they're not allowed to say that. Oh, oh my gosh, you would turn the students against the teachers in a way. Absolutely. So I, uh, I haven't sought his permission, but I'm just going to do it anyway. So Mr. Kidd, my English teacher, uh, I can remember once him being heckled by a student um, and I can't, I think we were looking at First World War poetry mm-hmm. and um, I can't remember but even how his name was mentioned, but uh, Oscar Wilde's name was mentioned. I think it was, oh, was Wilfred Owen gay? Yeah. Yes, he was. Uh, was Oscar Wilde gay? Yes, yes, he was. And he was also married. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, he moved on with the lesson and saying, like, can we get that to you know, whatever it was we were studying at that particular moment? It might have even been rc sheriff's journey's end as well yeah. rc sheriff yeah. also a splendid queer writer mm. but mm. that could not be mentioned no. like i no. shockingly only found that out oh about God. three years ago oh, wow <laughs> so uh so thank you uh for that information and it does sort of set that play in a different light but that tiny little crumb mm. from the table mm. of acknowledgement I can remember just one sort of rainy autumnal day where I was thinking, I'm going to have to watch the bus stop. Life is rubbish. I was 14 or whatever. I was just, mind was wandering. And then suddenly I didn't even have the ability to sort of see it for what it was. But Mm. I knew that he was breaking the rules. Mm. He was going against the grain. And it had such a positive impact mm-hmm. uh, so i once attended a, a conference for lgbt plus educators mm. and mm. Uh, there was a moment where you are invited to stand up and make contributions and somebody stood up and they said do you know what i think we just need to give a big round of applause to our queer elders who are here today and i started clapping myself and i was like absolutely yes you know kind of just yeah, to name yeah, a few people yeah. like sue sanders over there michael dance over there all those people that went on marches yeah. in manchester in the yeah. 1980s against absolute and then this person continued talking and this was in 2019 
do you know what? Ten years ago, being out of the closet was so hard for you. And I was like, oh, she's talking about me. <laughs> so you're an elder. Oh, in, I, I've been an elder now for a long time. So I've just had a bit of a realisation. So I thought I understood section 28. But you couldn't even say Oscar Wilde, comma, who was gay. Or that was, you couldn't talk about historical people like Alan Turing is the one that springs to mind, who was and Oscar Wilde who were convicted of being gay and punished for being gay, you couldn't mention that. So um, I think in practice, the way that it was interpreted for a number of schools and individuals was just don't yeah, say don't anything. don't mention it. Don't go anywhere near um, it. And the implication then was if you were a teacher and you overheard homophobic language, you would take a, a big gamble and a big risk mm. if mm. you called that out. Mm. So... It just wasn't really a picnic. However, I suspect that Section 28 has also galvanised a Mm. number of generations Mm. of people to say never again. Mm. Yes. I'm also, you know, sort of, um, you you could probably, if you are, you know, sort of good at numeracy, work out my age. But I am also old enough to remember the um, 1980s and 1990s AIDS mm. and HIV crisis. Yep. I I grew up in the west of Scotland and I was lucky enough as somebody who lived in you know, a number of gay communities in the northwest of England to have grown up uh, alongside queer elders yeah. uh, who survived mm. that time. Mm, and yeah. I'm so thrilled i'm so privileged and fortunate to have had that and the slogan of act up of silence mm. equals death mm. is yeah. just as important today yeah it's so important it's so vital it's your own time you're wasting so why not stick the kettle on put your feet up and have a cuppa ah bliss do you think there's a kind of argument to have the opposite of section 28 to have laws based around it being important to teach about lgbtq history and and to kind of prom- I do. not promote people being gay because that's mm. just as weird as promoting people not being it's not going to work mm. but kind of promote the understanding and the positive education around it absolutely and my model of education around lgbtq issues is Mm. that it should be a a part of the furniture Mm. maybe slightly more stylish furniture (laughs) but uh it should just be a part of the everyday and in fact there Mm. are some countries in in far off distance lands like scotland uh where it is compulsory it is part of the curriculum and and it it must be taught in some form and uh, the, the world did not end when that was brought in no uh, so I guess in terms of my journey as a teacher, so I mm. was in the classroom for 10 years and uh, I'm still an educator um, yeah. and I still you know, create educational content. Um, and I sort of feel like it's a little bit like the military or the priesthood. You might leave it. It never mm. quite leaves you. Yeah. And I was just determined to not waste my time and energy um, on secrecy. Mm. Mm. There's a, a very big distinction between privacy yes. and secrecy. Yes. It's yes. totally fine to be an educator and walk into the classroom and say, do you know what? I have very firm boundaries. Mm. I want to give very little away. That yeah. is fine. If, however, you have a lot of cisgender, heterosexual people telling you just never come out mm. just never yeah. come out victoria just don't do yeah. it mm. and you just end up with the best will in the world wasting time because you have this constant jump scare mm. of oh what does that mean oh are they going is this the day i'm going to be found out is someone going to see yeah. me out and about are they going to work me out and it is a waste of time and energy it wastes the children's yeah. time i yeah. mean it is appropriate for the name of today's podcast it is truly your own time you're wasting <laughs> by keeping yourself mm, in the closet and you were told um, to do that were you vic i i was yeah. yes so oh by numerous numerous people 
Um, and I knew that I wanted to uh, be out. And obviously, lots of people don't use that term out anymore. But mm. um, I knew I wanted to just turn up as my authentic mm-hmm. self in yes. my own way. Yeah. Uh, and some schools I, I waited a while, some schools I waited less time, hmm. but I would always have a moment where I would sort of think, okay, this, this feels like the right time. Uh, you know that horrible phrase, don't smile till Christmas? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah I hate that phrase. Yeah, I, it's a horrible phrase, it's dreadful. Uh, but I would sometimes say, well, look, you know what? I think I'm going to be gay by Christmas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, but the thing is, there were times, so I, I had a student bless them mm. uh and i'm i may cry on this podcast so i'll just that's okay we're all that's together. okay that's all right that's fine but uh they came up to me so they were having their year 13 prom they had been in my year 10 form and uh, like every student they had not had the easiest of times in mm. school and um they commented to me miss miss i just have to say this just thank you thank you and i was like that's, that's very sweet of you but what do you mean and it was so they said look just keep doing what you're doing that whole time I was this closeted little non-binary kid and you were just doing what you were doing and I know you thought that you were going to wait until you were going to come out to the class but we all worked you out it was the fringe like you had the gay hair (laughs) we all knew so I was just yeah. like, okay, yeah, probably. I'm not, I'm not that subtle, so that's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, oh, that's really, that's really lovely. And um, they had been someone where, um, uh, yeah, I cared about them deeply. And I think all teachers and all educators should walk into the classroom mm. with absolute care, respect, and love mm. for every single young person. And I have no idea. They had just been sat there taking it all in. Yeah. And it was just really beautiful. Yeah. And I re- I hope that they hear this. Um, mm. And yeah, you never know the impact no. that one word mm-hmm. is going to have. What's on your mind? Let us know your thoughts, ideas and anecdotes. Drop us a line at beyondmailbag at twinkle.co.uk. Do, do you think, though, Vic, mm. as a... You write PSHE materials. Do you think mm. a lot of mm. teachers are actually scared to, to bring up this sort of topic with a student? Oh, absolutely. And it's fear of getting things wrong mm. yeah. a lot yeah. of the time. And it's fear of um recrimination mm. um and I, I that's a human experience mm. and i'm hoping that in in my job and in twinkle mm. and beyond's role mm. we can make that process a little bit less scary yeah. a little less fearful um and it's just fear and the fact is when you actually talk to people and say it is as simple mm. as oh, you'd like to be called Oliver and yeah. he or, or they. Um, and that that's often it. Yeah. And then, oh, would you like me to pass that on to you know, your form tutor, to some yeah. other teachers? Um, also, you know, how do you feel about uh, that name being used at home? Do you use a different name at home? Hmm. Just having these very simple and respectful conversations it isn't going to solve every problem, but it, it is an incredibly important first step. Mm. And this should not be seen as something special or mm. worthy of applause. It, it should just be seen as common decency and, and human yeah. respect. Yeah. yeah. Um, so definitely, yes, I, I think people are scared and they're scared of getting things wrong. Mm-hmm. I think unfortunately, uh, Section 28 is not a thing of the past. No, no. there no, absolutely are not. often there have often been challenges um, to educators and to the education system and various people in positions of influence who would like to bring this back. And we have mm. to remain vigilant and we have to show just love and respect mm. yeah. to everybody of all genders and all sexual orientations.
So Vic, if you had one message for the teaching community out there, what would it be? It is, you don't have to have every single answer. Um, there are infinite ways to be a woman. There are infinite ways yeah. to be a man. There are infinite yeah. ways to be any sort of gender whatsoever. Um, mm -hmm. And just showing up and coming out as an ally um, and come yes. out as a straight person ally, come out as a cisgender ally, just be visible mm -hmm. in your support of everybody. That's all you need to do. Thank you so, so much for joining yes, thank us, Thank you Vic. very much, Vic. It has been genuinely fascinating. Yeah, it's been a th thrill. <laughs> You're easily thrilled, Vic. <laughs> um, but thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I really, really appreciate it. And I, I think I just want people to remember that queer joy exists. Absolutely. As well. yeah. I was just going to say a bit of news. Um, we are changing our format Ooh. And from next series, we will be going to 10 minute fortnightly episodes where we will discuss a range of topics all connected to education. Yeah, so we'll be back after the summer break with that shorter, punchier format. If you do have topics you want us to discuss or just want to be part of the conversation, you can almost email, always email us at beyondmailbag at twinkle.co.uk. And please like and follow us on your platform of choice. And if you want to be notified with those September episodes, you're going to have to turn the notifications on. Absolutely. You've got no choice. Yeah. Oh. Have a lovely summer, everyone. And yeah, we will great time. be back in your feed in September. We will. Bye. Bye for now. This podcast is proudly produced by Beyond. Please bear in mind the views and opinions expressed are those of individuals and may not represent those of Beyond or Twinkle.